So the research that I'll present on today really encompasses um, a series of different pieces of, of work. We've been interested in tracking the invasion of Sarcoptic mange into Yellowstone. It was introduced as a biological control agent at the turn of the century by state wildlife veterinarians with the hopes of driving down wolf and coyote numbers. Um, you know, wolves were eradicated in the 1930s. They rebounded when we reintroduced them in 95 and 96 and have spread. And so we've been really interested in understanding that invasion process of the parasite back into the wolf population, what its impacts have been, and, and, um, and understanding how that affects not only wolves themselves, but the rest of the ecosystem, the functioning of the ecosystem. To date, we've studied the, the individual impacts of sarcoptic mange. So we know that it in increases mortality among individuals. Um, it can increase um, mortality among young animals, so reproduction's impacted. And we've got all these sort of individual level pieces, and, and actually that scales up to the group level. We, know, we understand now that mange does impact sort of the long-term persistence of some of these packs, the social groups of wolves. We think we, we can see a signal of mange at the population level, but you know, at the same time that mange invaded, we've seen a we've seen a um, continuing decline of, of elk. So wolves were introduced in 95 and 96. So as to be expected, prey numbers have dropped. And so it's hard to tease apart the relative impacts of prey versus parasites. So I think one of the goals long term is to try and take a, a series of different approaches to understanding um, those relative impacts of, of um, both prey and parasites, including sarcoptic mange. We've spent a huge amount of time on the ground watching these wolves, and, and you realize, I think there's something about a social carnivore that you naturally gravitate towards. I mean, they, they, have, they live in family groups, they care for young, uh, there's complex social relationships between individuals. I think it's hard to see them go through a pretty severe infection like this, where um, you know, they're losing hair, their body condition deteriorates, survival of the pack diminishes, and so that's hard to see, and, and then the fact that we're not actually able to do anything. This is not, this is not a problem we can actually easily solve. Um, you know, it would require multiple treatments, there's no vaccination, um, there's, we're talking about a huge wildlife population that has very large boundaries, so there's really not an option for intervention. And so, the, you know, I think the best that we can do is really study the system well and learn, um, learn from this system and hopefully prevent sort of similar introductions in the future. And, and perhaps there are applications in other systems where we can actually intervene, and some of this research might help inform that. I think the overall take-home message from the research is, is that, um, you know, sarcoptic mange does have impacts on individuals. These parasites, even though we can't see them, they have, they have measurable impacts on both individual survival and population level dynamics. And I think historically they've been really underappreciated in terms of the, the impact. I think now we're seeing more and more um, an effort to incorporate the impacts and um, effects of, of parasites on the rest of the ecosystem functioning. Uh, and I think that's a, a really fruitful and important avenue of research going forward.